first two weeks of
Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here. It's a pleasure to see so many faces, and obviously the uh, map quest works, so you could find this room down here. Uh, I see community and trustees, staff, families, friends and fans, and a lot of people here representing for this exciting news as we start a new era today. So. Without further ado, it's my pleasure to introduce the Director of Athletics, uh, Jason Bietekofer. We will have uh, a few minutes with Jason and some more questions and discussion with our new head coach. And then we will uh, move to the hall where uh, media will have a few minutes for one-on-one -on -one interviews and then you can have as much time with them as they have for you. Uh, Jason. Thank you. Um, first and foremost, I know Dean just hit on it, but um, thank you for uh, thank you to everybody for being here. Um, today is a great day. I'm excited. Um, we uh, launched a national search uh, for the next head coach on the 20 on the 27th of December, and uh, you know with the full intent of identifying the next leader of this football program. We quickly identified that we needed to find a leader that had the energy and mental toughness to sustain and elevate this program. But at the same time, we needed a leader that had a vision for continuing to be true to who we are. The more with less mentality, the um, work ethic, brick by brick approach that has built this program over the last eight years under Ed Lamb's leadership. Although consistency and continuity were weighed in this decision, um, throughout this process, we were continually focused on getting the right leader for this program at this time um, in the history of this, uh, this institution. Level of in interest in this position was a serious testament to where this program sits today. We're a Big Sky Championship program. Um, there's a lot to be proud of. Um, a lot of that has been, uh, been elevated significantly over the last eight years. I can tell you we were thorough. We left no stone unturned. I need to take a moment to thank those that were significantly involved in this process. Eric Levitt for his leadership and guidance. Uh, Andrew Par Parrish for his legwork and uh, knowledge. And um, also need to take the opportunity to thank uh, former linebacker, student athlete Matt Holly. He was involved in this process as well. Um, he was a, a great resource and, and instrumental in the execution of, of this process. I would also like to take the opportunity to thank President Wyatt for his unwavering support uh, over the past, not only over the past uh, 14 or 15 days, but throughout the uh, first 140 days of uh, my tenure. Not that I'm counting. <laughs> it's, it's been an interesting few months. Um, as we entered this process, I had a high level of confidence that DeMario Warren was an up-and-comer in, this, in this industry and a key component of how this program has been built over the last eight years. <clears throat> I had significant visibility, obviously, in DeMario and his capabilities, um, but on December 27th, I was only 126, 127 days on the job. So, you know, it was, I thought it was important that we, again, 
entered an exhaustive national search and were extremely thorough in every aspect of what we executed. Um, throughout this process, we confirmed that DeMario is a great leader that is well respected by both the student athletes and the coaches. He's been instrumental in recruiting. That includes talent identification and player development. Very top notch in all of those areas. Um, quickly identified that he has the energy, mental toughness, tireless work ethic, and um, an ability, an innate ability to, to put forth a ton of effort, um, knowledge, and a vision to move this thing to the next level. Ultimately, DeMario clearly exhibited a strong desire to be part of this program throughout this process, and I can tell you is 100% focused on the future success of this football program. He understands that, there, that there's a lot of work that needs to be done. We are sitting uh, freshly off a of Big Sky championship, but consistency and elevating ourselves to national prominence is at the forefront of the next steps moving forward. With this understanding that there's a lot of work to be done, um, I have no doubt that under DeMario's leadership, he's ready to elevate and sustain this program. Simply, he is the man for this job. Joined today by his wife, Amanda, children, DJ, Giselle, and Daly, I'm excited to work alongside the 12th head coach for the Southern Utah football program, DeMario Warren. Um, I definitely wouldn't be up here if it wasn't for a lot of people, so I got to um, thank a lot of people uh, before I get started. So. First, I'd like to thank Jason uh, for him to make his first hire uh, be myself. I'm very grateful and honored. Uh, he went through a long process, uh, interviewed a lot of candidates, and uh, for him to choose me as the next man of the uh, SU, I'm very uh, thankful and proud to, to say I'm the next head coach. I have my own water over there. So, um, so I just want to also thank uh, President Wyatt, Eric Levitt, Andrew Paris. They are part of the hiring process. I wanted to um, thank our entire staff, um, our, our community, and, um, and especially my friends and my family, especially my mom. Uh, she sacrificed so much uh, throughout, throughout her uh, growing up to, uh, to get me to this point. So um, also I wanted to thank uh, my family, <laughs> my, uh, my daughter wanted to go to school today. <laughs> so. She, uh, she, I'm happy she came. My son DJ, Giselle, and then my wife. Um, uh, when everything happened two weeks ago, I was uh, went from being nervous and uh, just about my future in coaching um, to being uh, to being excited to be named the head coach, uh, interim head coach. And uh, then I saw a quote the next day. My mind was racing. I was confused. I was nervous. And the quote was. Uh, God is not concerned, as concerned about our comfort as he is our purpose. Sometimes he shakes things up to get us to our destiny. Um, at the time, I didn't know exactly what that meant. I didn't know if I meant to be the head coach here or be somewhere else or just stay in the same position. Um, all I knew is uh, when that happened, I was going to be able to uh, know that was the right choice. I don't know. I was going to get emotional today. <laughs> um, Uh, as coaches, it's our duty uh, to mentor and build young men on the playing field and off the playing field. And I guess uh, it's my time to, to have a bigger platform to reach more people. So uh, Coach Lamb did an amazing job here, taking a program from 18-game uh, losing streak and turning into a program that can beat anyone on any given sat uh, Saturday. He's uh, become a pillar in the community, and I look forward to further acquainting myself with you guys and getting to know uh, favors to the person that was going to take over this job after him. Uh, he won Man of the Year and Citizen of the Year. Um, and first of all, I didn't know those were awards that were given out. And uh, <laughs> second of all, it's ridiculous that that guy won both of those in the first eight years he's been here. So I don't know who I have to meet and talk to, but we will work on that as we go. <laughs> um, luckily for me, I understand I can't fulfill, I can't fulfill his shoes by myself. Um, we have an administration that is not content uh, being average, an average program and uh, have great ideas on how to push this uh, program to be a consistent winner. 
We have uh, student athletes that hold themselves and their teammates to the highest standard on and off the field and uh, will do anything for their teammates. We have an amazing university that prides itself on not only providing a great education, uh, but gives hands-on experience to be successful after their college career. And last but not least, we have an uh, outstanding community that uh, are the most caring, hardworking, passionate people that I've ever met. Uh, this is our program, and together we'll uh, build this into a consistent winner in Cedar City. Thank you. We would now entertain some questions. Coach, could you just take us through the process when you found out Ed was leaving and then up to this point? Mario, could you come uh, here? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if Jason knew this, but my wife was pretty upset with him. Uh, he called me at 5 o'clock on Christmas. He was very considerate because uh, it, was, it was later on. We got the presents open. Um, then, uh, so that's kind of how that went. And I was the interim head coach, so I did the interim head coach duties for about a week. Then uh, the process, we found out was going to extend a little bit longer than we wanted. I, we had a vacation to the convention this year, uh, first time my wife was going to get to go. So Jason kind of ruined that a little bit. But <laughs> I'm off to a bad start. Uh, so we, uh, then we had a date night uh, planned Friday. And uh, Can she, I ruin that? You called me that night, yeah. <laughs> you called me that night, so my head started spinning again. So it was, we didn't really know. Uh, what was going on as far he kept it real quiet. I mean, there was there was very minimal people in the process, hiring process, and uh, we we didn't know much was going on. So we had to kind of just sit back and, and do our best job of getting prepared for all those interviews, and um, and then we I got a call uh, Saturday. We were at All American Diner, a breakfast <laughs> place, and uh, she uh, told me President Wyatt was going to call, so I had to run home and get ready for that, and so. Uh, had a great conversation with President Wyatt, and then uh, Sunday morning, uh, Jason gave me a call and told me to come in the office. Started out very um, kind of like a game show. I didn't think I was going to get the job, and then he <laughs> popped out the question, and I uh, was very, very thrilled to, to get named the head coach. How much relief did that bring you, just to finally have it be done? Um, it, I mean, just because we didn't know what was going on, it, it definitely brought a sense of relief. But like, as I told the players, it instantly turned into let's get to work. There's a lot of work to do. We uh, are behind in recruiting a little bit. we got to get out there and get in front of some parents and some families and make sure they understand what this program uh, has in store in the future and, and what this program could give to their, their, their young man. How much pressure is it to succeed Lamb? A uh, ton of pressure. I don't think anybody's going to put more pressure on themselves than myself. Uh, that's kind of how I've always been. Uh, I had to succeed Justin Inna, which was one of the best defensive coordinators here. And, uh, and so I put the pressure on myself from day one, and I think I'll do the same thing uh, stepping in these, these shoes. The, recru the recruits, uh, the recruiting process you mentioned, have any decommitted, uh, any, anybody, anybody le leaning a little bit uh, as far as on or off the bandwagon? No, point? luckily all the commits were on defense, so um, I was able to Good. stay. <laughs> <laughs> I was able to stay in constant contact with those guys and make sure they were are still committed. And uh, I mean, this is still we still got three weeks before signing day, so there's still a lot of work to do even with, with even with the commits. So they'll be hearing from us, and we'll be in their their living rooms pretty soon. Uh, you have a, someone to replace it your old position at this point. Um, do you have anyone in mind for that? There's there's a lot of candidates uh, for a job. We have a great staff here. Um, so we're going to evaluate every every situation. We have enough staff members here to, to finish the recruiting process, so there's no timetable. We're going to get the right guy in uh, to, to fit the, to, for, our, for Southern Utah to fit the, make, make the right fit. So it's going to, I don't know exactly when it'll be. It could be in a week. It could be in a couple weeks. But we'll, we'll get those, those couple guys in to, to replace me. Do you want to have a staff in place before signing day? Not necessarily. It doesn't uh, doesn't have to be. We have enough staff members here to, to get through signing day. Now, I just through the grapevine, I was here, and the staff was pretty worried through this whole process. Have they reached out to you to to kind of say, "Hey, we're relieved," or what has their been? What's their response been? Uh, I think I think it was just exciting for everybody. I mean, we're all friends, uh, so more than just keeping it in house. I mean, I think they were genuinely happy for. It. Me and my family uh, being able to, to get this opportunity. It's a, it's a great opportunity to be a head coach at Southern Utah University. So um, I think that was 
their first concern is just to be happy for me and now it's uh, time to get back to work and, and keep things as close as they can be uh, to, to normal, but uh, bring my own personality and push this, push this program to the next level. Jason, was the goal in mind to keep the hiring in-house? Did you want to have the hiring done in-house or, uh, or were you open to? You know, we, we, uh, we, looked, at, we looked at a broad, uh, you know, again, we executed a, an exhaustive national search. Um, there were definitely, uh, there's a lot to be proud of with how this program has been built. So a lot of the, uh, the tenants for this search were, you know, focused and, and predicated upon exactly some of the things that I previously mentioned. You know, the, we needed to get somebody in here, you know, that understand, that understood who we are and, you know, that, that had the, the work ethic and, you know, that brick by brick mentality that has really got us to where we are today. You know, we weren't out there, we were out there looking at a, a broad scope of candidates. We weren't looking at somebody that was going to bring in you know, 15 transfers from all over the running back from Florida, JC running back from Florida. This, there's a ton of, I did ultimately want to further proliferate kind of that approach and that mentality. Um, but, but we had to look far and wide for, for the right individual to do that. And, uh, you know, we're just uh, blessed, uh, you know, with the, with the opportunity to promote from within, how much, you know, how much player, how much player influence did you have? In your career? <laughs> um, I talked to a few guys, a few guys that are in the room. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I, I mentioned this yesterday and I know these guys too are available, you know, afterwards for, for comment, I believe, I don't, I don't think that was previously mentioned, but, um, you know, I, I spoke, I had a number of conversations, um, probably maybe seven or eight. And I think, uh, you know, a couple of those conversations, uh, were representative of a larger swath of, uh, of, of student athletes. Um, ultimately, you know, they, uh, they were very, they're very proud of what they've accomplished. Uh, they have a lot of trust and respect uh, on, uh, in this coaching staff. Um, that was uh, definitely uh, presented to me um, in, in a very professional and in an appropriate manner. Ultimately, at the end of those conversations, and I'll be honest, what I felt really good about, um, you know, as, as we entered the process, is each and every one of them, uh, um, you know, at the end of the conversation, you know, as I entered this process and, uh, you know, to have that vote of confidence in, in how we were moving forward and the ability to attack this thing on a national scale. And, uh, you know, it's just, again, we're just blessed to, to have uh, a gentleman to my left that is, uh, that's ready um, to, to elevate into the head coaching chair and to lead uh, what, 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 in my assessment, over the first 140 days is an unbelievable group of uh, student athletes. Did signing day shape the speed of the process? Um, I, you know, obviously you want to, you know, obviously you want to expedite. Uh, you, we wanted to be expeditious, um, not only because we have 90 young men that are on pins and needles, and we have coach, coaches that are on pins and needles, uh, but you know, as it relates to the recruiting window, you know, there's obviously a lot of benefit. As Demario said, you know, we're, we're, there's a lot of work to be done. Um, ultimately, we did work as expeditiously as we possibly could um, we wanted to be thorough leave no stone unturned so um, you know we, we really didn't you know we we paused a couple times you know and, and and had to take a pause and say hey you know we you know we want to be expeditious but we got to get this right um, so you know it was in the back of my head but ultimately we had to we had to go through every single pace to ensure that that uh, we landed in the right spot and, and uh, I feel really really good about where we landed. Did Coach Lamb give any suggestions? Um, yeah you know I, uh, I leaned on Coach Lamb for feedback. I think uh, a majority of the uh, of the candidates uh, for this position um, you know are the people that we had had conversations with reached out to to Coach Lamb um, so it was interesting kind of hearing his uh, um, hearing his feedback, he's obviously extremely supportive of Demario and ha had nothing but, but great things to say. And, and really, um, to be honest, and, and early in the process, provided me with a little bit of extra comfort that Demario was uh, ready from a leadership perspective to elevate into this role. Was there any you with it being your first hire to make kind of like a big splash hire? Um, no, I don't think so. You know, I mean, uh, I've been through three or four of these things, um, you know, from a led three or four of these things now. And, and uh, you know, ultimately it's, you know, it's all about getting it right. And, and you know, I owe it to, to the student athletes. I owe it to the institution to, to do what's best. And ultimately it's, um, you know, there were, big, there were bigger splashes that could have been made. And it, didn't, it didn't even cross my mind. It's just because he wasn't an alignment He's not that big. Can you tell us how, how many candidates you looked at, uh, something about them? <coughs> sure. Um, we, uh, we spoke to um, 18 individuals um, 
had phone conversations with 18 individuals, narrowed, uh, narrowed the conversation uh, in focus to six, and uh, DeMario um, elevated himself. He just had all, you know, had, had all the right attributes, um, you know, to, to and, and uh, built confidence through his vision that he was ready to lead this program. And when I say attributes, again, it's attributes that are in alignment with this community, with this campus, and ultimately with how this program's been built. Anyone Mark? else? Yes, sir. Mario, have you had a chance to talk to Coach Lamb in the last 24 hours? I called him right after we met with the players. I gave him a call, and, and Sarah picked up on the phone and started screaming. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I got to talk to her for about 30 seconds, and Lamb knew there was going to be a bunch of phone calls right after it got released. So he just said, I'm proud of you, and then we, we moved on. But I'll definitely be talking to him throughout the next couple of weeks to, to get his advice about uh, what to do next. The fact, DeMario, the fact that you basically came here with Ed in 2008, how did that shape, how did, how did his mentorship shape you for this day, for this moment? Uh, he put me in a ton of different roles throughout my career, and I didn't understand him at the time. I didn't get any extra pay for him, so I, well, <laughs> I wasn't excited about him at the time, but uh, it, it's built me into to where I am at today. I mean, I've been over academics. I've been over recruiting. I've been over um, being the associate head coach and doing the, the scholarships and every, all the behind scenes you could think of, I've pretty much had my hands on a little bit. And so um, he's prepared me to be able to run the program, but as far as just, just his vision and his foundation, being here when he used to, to walk up the practice field and with the buckets and he used to siphon water out there and we used to practice across the street. I mean, there's so many little things that I appreciate that he's done and I think that's kind of made me appreciate Southern Utah for how far we have come already. Mario, between now and uh, spring practice, you mentioned recruiting, but what other kind of goals do you hope to hit before uh, spring ball roll, rolls, rolls around? I um, want to get, uh, get involved with the student athletes as far as uh, graduating. I just want to get, get a better idea of how, how, how far they're along in their process and how we can help them graduate and, and make their goals as fast as they can as fast as they want to make them um, I want to get uh, our staff solidified uh, make sure that we talk about recruiting in the future and, and set ourselves up uh, for future aspects of, of recruiting and who we're going after and what areas are we going to hit um, and then and then just just trying to get the seniors talk to the seniors a lot about leadership and making sure those guys are, are going to be in the forefront of uh, what's going to happen over the next six to nine months Will you still have the signing day party thing? Well, it's not party, but the announcements and stuff that we always have? I assume. Uh, usually, uh, I think the administration covers that. Yeah. <laughs> to be determined. We've yeah, we, so, we got, other, we got other things to focus on in the next few days. Yeah, so, so I'll, uh, yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> Anyone else? Okay, again, we need to take DeMario out in the hall for a one-on-one -on -one interview for about six, eight minutes, and then as long as he can be here, you can uh, visit with him. Congratulations. Thank you.